When it comes to population dynamics, age cohorts are a very typical way of handling these. These have some really interesting properties. Let's dive in and sort out populations by age cohorts. Now, this is not too uncommon. You're used to thinking about sorting things out by, say, year. If, for example, you raise livestock, you keep track of your stock by year. Or if, like me, you raise students, then you keep track of them by year. First year students, second year students, third year students, etc. One often keeps track of human populations by decade. We talk about people who were born in the 80s or the 90s or even earlier than that. So let's do some dynamics on these different age cohorts. Here's our assumptions. We're going to have K age cohorts with equal time spans. So we're going to partition that time interval evenly, and we're going to do dynamics in discrete time. We're going to keep track of our population sizes by means of a population vector P that depends on this discrete time N. So P of N is going to keep track of the sizes of the k different age cohorts at time n. So we have p1 of n, p2 of n, p3 of n, all the way up through pkn. Each of these entries is telling you the size of the population in that cohort. Now the simplest kinds of dynamics that we could put on this would be something like the following. p at time n plus 1 is related to p at time n by some matrix. And that matrix is going to be full of zeros along the top row, and then full of zeros in the last column. And then we're going to have in everything else in that big old block an identity matrix. So ones along the diagonal, and then zeros everywhere else. Now that's kind of interesting, but what does that mean? What is this really doing? What this is doing is this is encoding that discrete time as moving or graduating to the next cohort. So what I mean is you start with some population vector, P1, P2, all the way up through PK at time zero. At time one, everybody is graduated to the next age cohort. There's a zero because there's no new people, no new population, no births, and then P1, and then P2 all the way up through PK minus 1. So the, the population size has just moved. And then after another time step, our population vector is 0, 0, P1, P2, all the way up through PK minus 2. Gee, what happened to PK minus 1 and, and PK? Oh, right. They did what everything does. Eventually, you go to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. That is, if we think about this matrix N, that in block form has zeros everywhere except for an identity matrix along that subdiagonal in that lower left-hand corner, then this matrix N is nilpotent. If I take N and multiply it by itself k times, I get the zero matrix. This means everybody dies. Everybody keeps graduating to the next cohort till there's nobody left. And this is clearly not a good model for population dynamics. We would like something a little bit better than that. So let's get busy and talk about reproduction. If each age cohort has some birth rate, let's call that R sub i. Let's say that it is non-negative then what we can do is rewrite that linear system into a modified system where EP is related to P by a big matrix, just like before, but along the first row, we have these birth rates, R1, R2, R3, all the way up through RK. Everything else is just like before, zeros in that last column below the RK, and then a subdiagonal identity matrix. Now, what this really means is that all of the births being in that first row, they start off in the first age cohort. Uh, think about that. You might have to write this out in terms of components to see that that really does work. Now, in practice, 
not all of these R sub I's might be strictly positive. You typically have reproduction happening along certain age cohorts. This is probably going to be a unimodal function, starts off really low, gets higher, and then goes down. Now, this is not a bad model for population dynamics, but I think we could do better if we incorporated some survival into this model. As it stands, we've been assuming that each population cohort just automatically graduates to the next age. Of course, that does not always happen. So let's say that each cohort has a survival rate, S sub i, that is, let's say, between 0 and less than or equal to 1. But let's say that it's strictly positive. Then we could modify our linear system to be EP is some matrix times P, where the matrix is just like before. You've got those birth rates, R sub I, along the top row. And then you've got zeros everywhere else. But on that sub-diagonal square matrix, instead of having the identity, you have a diagonal matrix with entries S1, S2, S3, all the way up through, what, SK? No, SK minus 1, because this is a K minus 1 by K minus 1 square matrix. What about that last cohort? Oh, that's right. When you get to the end, you are at the end. It's as if SK equals 0. Now, this model, where we've added births, we've added survival rates, this is a very well-known model. This is called the Leslie model in population dynamics. And we're going to continue examining this a little bit and see what we can show. Now, you could, if you wanted to, incorporate some additional effects in here as well. If you were raising livestock, you could talk about harvesting. You could try to incorporate a whole bunch of other more realistic features. We're not going to go there. We're going to stick with the previous model that we looked at with survival rates equal to 1 and this more realistic model as well.